Can you tell me what the thinking is on thorium? The first commercial reactor operated in this country at Shippingport was based on thorium fuel. My constituents were always asking me about this. Does thorium have a place in our nuclear future? I see no compelling reason to move towards a thorium cycle. Uh, there was a recent report done by the Nuclear Energy Agency of the OECD on thorium systems. Can you make them work? Yes, you can make them work. Is there an advantage to doing it? I haven't seen it. Does the OECD report evaluate Alvin Weinberg's concept of the molten salt breeder and identify technical challenges which may impede development? Of those 11 pages in a 133-page report, one sentence does so. This one gigawatt design was a thermal reactor with graphite-moderated core that required heavy chemical fuel salt treatment with a removal time of approximately 30 days for soluble fission products, a drawback that could potentially be eliminated by using a fast spectrum instead. In a fast spectrum reactor, uranium and thorium perform the same. In a solid fuel reactor, uranium is a superior choice. It is only in Alvin Weinberg's thermal spectrum molten salt breeder reactor that thorium's advantages become clear. Let's reword it for clarity. This one gigawatt design was a thermal reactor with graphite moderated core that avoided the drawbacks of fast spectrum by removing soluble fission products through the use of chemical fuel salt treatment. The successful breeder will be the one that can deal with the spent fuel most rationally, either by achieving extremely long burnup or by greatly simplifying the entire recycle step. This is kind of like a kidney for the nuclear reactor. This is how long it takes our spent fuel to reach the same radioactivity as, as natural uranium. It's about 300,000 years. If you can keep all the actinides out of the waste stream, then you can really, really shorten that to about 300 years. It's where it's positioned on the periodic table. It goes down the chain into different elements. But if you start a couple of steps to the left along the periodic table, inherently you take out most of the nasties in the waste. If you use thorium with this kind of efficiency, something really amazing becomes possible. Every cubic meter of the earth has got a certain amount of uranium and thorium in it. It's about two cubic centimeters of thorium and half a cubic centimeter of uranium. If you can use thorium to the kind of efficiencies that we're talking about today, this has the energy equivalent of more than 30 cubic meters of the finest crude oil or anthracite coal. So this is like taking worthless piece of dirt anywhere in the world and turning it into multiple of the finest chemical energy resources we have. I mean, that's absolutely amazing. Now, good news is we don't have to mine average continental crust for thorium. You can see that uranium-235 is like on par with silver and platinum. Can you imagine burning platinum for energy? And that's what we're doing with our nuclear energy sources today. We're burning this extremely rare stuff and not thorium. As a natural resource, the appeal of thorium over uranium is that thorium has zero environmental cost to acquire. We can power our civilization on thorium without opening a single thorium mine. It is already a plentiful byproduct of existing mining operations. Bleached by water, U compounds were widely dispersed, scattered far and wide. U compounds today are found as complex, dilute deposits containing tetra, penta, and hexavalent uranium. Unlike uranium, tetravalent thorium, and it's constantly tetravalent, resists weathering. Thorium thus remained concentrated where it first wound up, within easy reach. And your deposit has 8% rare earths. It may have 14% thorium. One rare earth, and usually one thorium atom. There's so much rare earths that we're throwing away because of thorium. Rare earth materials are used to make high-tech products like advanced batteries that power everything from hybrid cars to cell phones. We want our companies building those products right here in America. But to do that, American manufacturers need to have access to rare earth materials, which China supplies. So I have a friend who's trying to start a rare earth mine in Missouri, and all he wants the government to do is to just let him put the thorium aside for future use. So I asked him, Jim, how much thorium do you think you'll be pulling up a year? He goes, I think about 5,000 tons. Is that a lot? There was 60 people sitting on the other side of the podium going, do you think there's a stable supply? <laughs> 5,000 tons of thorium would supply the planet with all of its energy for a year. So your one mine would bring up enough thorium 
without even trying to power the entire planet. It's found in tailings piles. It's found in ash piles. And he goes, and there's like a zillion other places on Earth that are just like my mind. It's a nice mind, but it's not unique. It's not like this is the one place on Earth where this is found. We could use thorium about 200 times more efficiently than we're using uranium now. This reduces the waste generated over uranium by factors of hundreds and by factors of millions over fossil fuels.